How's it going boys and girls? My name is Kawi and welcome back to the Kara Club. In today's video, we're going to learn about data types in scripting. Now this is very important because everything you do inside of Studio revolves around knowing what data you are dealing with. So you can describe to the computer what exactly you want it to do. Now if this sounds confusing, don't worry about it because I'm going to give you plenty of examples what the code looks like, how to use it, as well as in-game examples where you could find it. I just want to mention that this is the second video in the scripting series. So if you're a beginner and want to learn more about making games in studio from the ground up, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of my content. And with that, let's get started. So what exactly is data type? It sounds technical and confusing all at the same time. And it probably is for some of you because you're not used to thinking about this kind of stuff. So I'm going to shift our attention away from code for just a moment and start looking at games first. So here's a game called Island. You probably know about it because I have been doing contents for it for the longest time. And if I ask you, how many stuff can you name inside of this game? And you'll probably be able to tell me a lot more than you actually know. And we're going to use this game as example. So first thing we see is that we got portals. You got the tool belts on the bottom of the screen. The left hand side of the screen, we got the buttons and the icons. Then there are flowers, there are weapons. I have an inventory with a lot of items in there. I have about 9,000 berry seeds. These are all data that the developers created. And as a developer, we have to describe it to Roblox Studio in order to make that a reality. So the way that we are going to describe it is to use data types. So let's take a look at what we can use to describe our data. The first two common types of data is numbers and strings. A number is a number. It can be any numbers you can think of. So local x equals zero. Local y equals 10. Local z equals negative 10. Or local a equals 7.5. All of these are numbers. You'll frequently use numbers to keep track of coins, money, gems, anything that has to do with currency or any quantity numbers of items. You want to use numbers to keep track of them. So if you go around, play a lot of games, anywhere that you see any kind of number, it uses the number type data type. So on island, you use the number data type to keep track of coins. You use the number data type to keep track of berry seeds, the number of flowers you have, stuff like that. So the next data type is called string. It just basically means words or phrases. For example, if you want to name your enemy, you can say something like this. Local enemy name equals green slime. Or local boss name equals slime king. You'll know that these are strings because they are inside of a double quote with the word inside of it. If you go inside of Island and take a look at all the inventory, you can see that all of these items have names and numbers associated to it. So here is berry seeds and I have 9,000 of them. So if I were to write this in code, it will look something like this. Local item name equals berry seeds. And for the quantity, I'll say local item quantity equals 9,000. This is not exactly how they did it. This is just an example so you guys can relate to it. In real cases, this is actually a lot more complicated than it sounds. But for now, just learn the basics of looking at the game based on their data types. The next data type is called Boolean, which basically means yes or no, true or false. Anything that has two outcomes that is opposite to one another, you can use Booleans to keep track of them. So local light switch equals false. So with this, you know that there's a light switch and right now it is off. Or local door lock equals true. So with this statement, you'll know that the door is locked and it can be unlocked because the opposite of true is false. In scripting, we only use truth and false. There is no such thing as yes or no, although we should have an option to write like that, but we don't. So where would you find situation that you would want to use this? So let's go back to islands again. You can find Boolean inside of the settings. I can turn notification on and off. That's an example of Boolean. I can turn shadows on and off. That's another example of Boolean. Anything that has to do with flipping a switch, like lights, doors, yes or no answer, you can use Boolean to represent that data. The next data type is called Neil, which basically means no information or the absence of data. This might sound kind of weird for a lot of people because why would you want to create a variable with no values in it, right? It's kind of like saying, let's go to the supermarket, but let's not buy anything at the same time. It's kind of weird, right? Neil is not frequently used by scripters, but in Roblox Studio, they use it a lot to find information for you. So for example, when you're making a game and you want to know if a player has a potion on them, if a potion exists, 
it will tell you that you have a potion. If it doesn't have a potion, it will tell you Neil, which is nothing. Neil is there to help you understand what is inside your game. It tells you whether a player has something or it doesn't have anything. So another example might be, how much homework do you have? And you can either respond English, math, science, etc., or you can respond Neil for nothing. So this data type will pop up a lot as you learn more about Studio. But for now, just let this sit in your head and remember that it existed. At some point, you're gonna find this very useful. The last data type that I want to mention is table. Now, I'm not talking about a literal table where you eat at. It is more like a train where there are a lot of cars attached together. And inside of each car, you can put stuff inside of them, either passengers, luggage, or whatever it is that you want. So if I were to decide to put numbers inside of them, I can do that. If I want to put a name inside, I can do that as well. So up to this point, you have seen all this code with numbers, strings, booleans, and neils. These are all single value. What that means is that it is only one type of information. Now, when you're making games, it is not always just about numbers and strength. Sometimes you need a combination of both. So if you want more complicated data like a weapon, then you need to use a table because it has a name and it has a damage. Instead of using two different variables to keep track of the name and the weapon damage, we can use one variable for both data. So a table is essentially a type that you can group information together. So the way you write this inside a script is like this. Local weapon equals open curly brace, close curly brace. So anything that is happening inside of these braces is going to be considered your data. It could be names, it could be numbers, it could be true or false, it just cannot be nothing. To put a value inside of it, we're going to go inside of the curly brace and we're going to start typing fire brand sword. That's one of the data. That is the name of the weapon. But if I want to add another data to it, I'll do comma number five. So this is how you would create a weapon with a lot of information on it in a single variable. And if you want something that is even more complicated, you can keep adding more data to it. So to show this to the audience, you can just use the print weapon just as any other data type. Now press play and you can see all of your data printed out inside of the output window. So this is all I'm going to teach you in this video. This data type stuff can get extremely complicated and I don't want to confuse you because I just want to keep this as a beginner friendly as possible. As you grow as a developer, you'll learn more about them gradually. If I show you everything here, you won't ever want to code ever again because you will be completely overwhelmed by all of the complicated concepts that you can't even keep up. What I showed you here is only the basic. If you keep learning a little bit every single day, you eventually get to a point where you're confident enough to make your own game. So let's recap what we have learned so far. First, you learn what data type is. They are information you enter into Studio to describe your game. Then you learn that there are more data types. Number is a number. String is a word or a phrase. Boolean is on and off switch or yes or no answer. Neil is no information. Table is a collection of information that can describe complicated data like a weapon. And this is the basics of data type. If you're having any trouble understanding this stuff, just put your question in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer all of the questions for you. So here's the last advice that I want to pass on to you. The best way to learn is to code a lot. So don't be afraid to experiment and test out what you have learned so far. Just don't assume you know it. The only metric that shows how good you are with code is by showing the results. The more results you get, the better you become. So thank you boys and girls for watching and I'll see you in the next video in game or at the Carrot Club. Take care, everybody.